While being started since year 2011, we focus to help property owners and developers to maximize their rental income with full rental management services. We empower our team and create happy clients with our best with passion and joy. We believe human capital is the key success. Therefore, we will continue to invest in our team so that they will continue to grow with us. Joining us and uh, for Lian as well, uh, came all the way then to, to have this session, right? Uh, perhaps so we want to start today for yeah. our chatting and uh, exactly. I mean, I need to thank you, Ivan, like for bringing me for inviting me to this very very amazing and awesome place, White Bed, uh, nearby Jalan Duraza area, and it's actually a co-working space. It's, guys, this place is fantastic. Seriously, look okay. at. Our backdrop here, right? This is just one angle of this place. You need to check out the whole entire place, and you'll be like, "Wow!" Okay, just like me, first time coming here. <laughs> so thank you so much, Iwan, and um, thank you for having me. Uh, this is so good because um, I think right now uh, in the pandemic, right, and the pandemic crisis, a lot of people lost their job, and yeah. and there are so many uncertainties, insecurities, and a lot of people facing anxiety. As well, not sure how to move on, um, and a lot of them, some of them, they, they think that oh, I have been working as this, 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 so I only have some skill, particularly for this particular industry. So I don't know whether I can change my career to another. And also for people in tourism and real estate, they're like, oh my god, it's right now so in a, such a big trouble. So well, um, employers actually still looking for people after this crisis or during this crisis. So all these questions, all these questions, queries, that's where I'll ask Ivan, alright? So don't worry, Ivan will actually share with us a lot about this. Yeah, pretty much, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, Ivan, first thing yeah. first, I would like to ask you, um, why you chose mechanical engineering? Right, uh, now let's, back to, let's bring you back to years uh, 2003. <clears throat> that was the year that I graduated as a mechanical engineer. And if you ask me why choose mechanical engineer, mm -hmm. to be frank, it was like everyone um, understand that was after I finished my secondary school and I was wondering where to go and what to do. Uh, of course, uh, parent, family do not give me advice, right? So basically, what I did is to looking at a friend, hey guys, so what, where do you go? What do you study? <laughs> uh, Frankly, I kind of actually follow maturity of my friend and then so we're looking at then where to go and what course to pick basically I follow. Uh, that's kind of actually set, right? Uh, however, and managed to complete uh, four years and finally uh, went to UK, uh, obtained my uh, bachelor's uh, degrees in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. That's how the story of mine when, uh, I came into mechanical engineering. Okay, yeah. that's cool. So, okay, you've been in mechanical engineering and I understand that you have worked with you about a year in the manufacturing industry. So, why the change? What triggered you at the time like to jump, you know, to jump ship or to jump to another <laughs> industry? Uh, okay, uh, good question. And uh, you asked me, frankly, initially it was like everyone when, when I was in mechanical engineer for a year, uh, I worked in a factory uh, which is located in Shah Alam. And it was like everyone working day to night, you know, Monday to Saturday, a uh, very boring and routine kind of job. Uh, until about half a month, half a year, and I realized uh, is it the direction and the career that I want? When looking at my <coughs> superior or manager and director, where they how he looks like mm. and his current situation, okay. and I started to think of is it the direction, the future direction that I want to head into? Mm. So I started to look for, think about my career and look for others' alternative way. So I attended a lot of course, reading and etc. Of course, one of the famous books during my time which is the Richard Wurdian by Robert Kiyosaki and that book's telling us about how to become financial freedom mm -hmm. yes, one of the mechanisms is to 
jump from employee to self-employed mm -hmm. and business investors. Now, uh, one of the method is to rest, which is property investment. Yeah. So that's where actually um, it bring me an idea that hey, let's try figure out real estate. Mm. So I started um, when I was working in engineer. I also started for my real estate part time, part time business. Ah, okay. So after a while, then I am thinking of why not give myself full swing or hundred percent go for it because I believe doing two things at one time actually is unlikely to to have a good result. Mm. That's where actually I go for full committed to my real estate business, I quit my engineer and that's how I transformed during the turning point of mine during 2003 to 2004. I see. So right now you have about 15 years of experience in real estate and also about 10 years in tourism industry. So looking back about the career change the decision that you made earlier on, um, what, what do you feel? First question. Um, well, I think another good question I also never asked of myself for the past 10 to 15 years. Um, you asked me initially when I jumped from a comfort zone, which is my engineer, to a totally different industry. It is also it's always a fear, a fear of uncertain whether it is the right direction, it is going to be a stable career. I do have fear, but however, what is in my mind during that time was asking myself if after the change if I fell so what are the consequences so when I'm looking at that answers is what's what come in my mind is that well if I fell so I can't be to my engineer mm. so there's, there's nothing feared so that's why I took the change to give myself at least a year to two years to start something new and also I discussed with my family and get their support as well. Hey guys, uh, his, you know, uh, parents, and if give me some time, you know, I understand it is not an easy that uh, after you guys support me for four to five years and uh, being an engineer and I, I quit. So I think it is important that you need to get your parent and family support. With your parent and family support, basically you have a peace of mind that you can go all the way up. 100%. Because mm. without family support, it is very challenging for you to do something that you, which is uncertain and your family keep actually asking you and, and question you. Yeah. I think that's very important uh, for, for, for not even myself or everyone. You need to have that conversation, discussion with your family, get their support. Fear is always there, but like I said, so if one or two years, so I can't do well, I can't see result. So the consequences is well, gain experience, go back to your your engineer or whatever your profession. Yeah. That's it. So there's no nothing to lose. So why not? That's what makes me um, take up the challenges to step up. I totally agree with that. I definitely love that principle, you know, love that theory of you just need to start off your comfort zone and just jump, you know, and like you yeah. say, there's nothing to lose, right? One to two years or even three or four years. Might as go back to your old profession, right? No, no, there's no harm at all. So, I would, right now, I mean, everyone is impacted by this COVID-19 pandemic crisis, right? So, particularly in tourism, hospitality, and uh, real estate industry, I think it's like really heavily impacted. So, what do you see on, or actually, what are the challenges that really facing Um, well, let me share a bit humble experience on so what what I see. The COVID nineteen or pandemic crisis actually is one of the uh, crises that none of us really prepare for it and uh, we foresee and control. So, if you ask me personally, it's actually heavily impacted, especially in the tourism and real estate industry. Uh, According to Malaysia Association of Hotel, it says that nearly about 30% of the hotel going to close down. That numbers is very scary. And uh, even we see all the news and media in, in online, in, in everywhere, our um, uh, unemployment rate also increased to about 3.9%. According to Malaysia TV News, it says that the tourism and travel industry is about nearly um, 
two million one million of uh, jobs uh, in the Greece, they might actually uh, lose their jobs. Now these figures is also uh, estimated it could be higher, which we do not know. And uh, according to the Malaysia Hotel Association, it also says that some of the big brand hotels, examples like Hilton, Hyatt, Swiss Garden International, they started actually closing down, or perhaps actually they have already laid off mm. the employee. So the numbers is also uncertain and uh, estimated. Well, based on all these figures, telling us that why actually a uh, hotel or hospitality tourism industry are heavily impacted. I personally felt that because of number one, the restriction of international travels, and uh, the moment actually tourists couldn't fly into Malaysia. Mm. So hotel is immediately actually affected. Then number two, let's talk about domestic. The domestic tourism, let's ask about ourselves. Even MCO or CMCO actually has over. Do you tend to immediately travel with your family to holidays? So I'm sure you might have a doubt. Yeah. Maybe yes or no. Yeah. So in that case, whether international or domestic tourists actually has stopped traveling, mm. spending, and in that case, so what do you see? Hotel are definitely in standstill. Yeah. Then number two, even hotel facilities, event, function room are also restricted. And facilities like pool and gym also not allowed to use. In that case, so why should I want to stay, spend a few hundred dollars to stay in a star rated hotel? Yeah. If I can't use the facility, the events and function are so restricted. So if tourists cannot do, this segment also cannot do, we can foresee hotel are totally badly affected. That's why I foresee many have started actually leaving this industry. Mm -hmm. So this is wow. very disappointed, however, it is actually a fact. Wow! Oh my god! I heard all, all the facts and figures, statistics that you just told us is, is really making all of us scared. But we always believe. Whenever there's crisis, there are always opportunities arises right from that crisis. So, despite of all these challenges that are facing uh, by tourism and hospitality industries, what do you see the opportunities actually arises, or what the, what are the new normals that it's gonna be in this industry? Uh, I think this is a good topic. So let's um, look at study together. Mm -hmm. What are the reason very hot? Uh, we call it new normals mm. and look at the Malaysian MCO started uh, much until now there's a lot of new way of actually living firstly look at it is because of social distancing yeah. and hotel has started practicing about uh, minimize or zero contact mm. right so that's one thing secondly they try best actually not to be um, paperless and also cashless mm. so everything basically doing online so not to do papers and paying, collecting cash. That's for sure happening now. And one of the trend and more uh, opportunity as well as uh, online VR tour. Mm. And used to people, you know, they want to see physically about the properties. And because of VR, everything can move to online. So we 3D, right? That's also another trend and new normals. Whether in real estate and hospitality, and many hotelers and real estate companies have started to use this VR to promoting the uh, accommodations and property. This is the second uh, new normal trend. Thirdly, and all of us actually work from home yeah. during this period. And even the recent government is uh, heavily pushing about this uh, flexi working arrangement. Mm. And this is a new trend that we, a new normal as well, we need to understand. Uh, the other four point is about during this period I understand that people uh, have challenges in terms of especially they wanted to uh, rent a place, yep. apartments, they might have problems in terms of budget. Yes. So that's why in tradition, so when you're renting an apartment you need to uh, pay two months deposit kind of mm -hmm. kind of uh, practice and then commit a year contract. Mm -hmm. But this actually has been also changed because of what certain mm. so you will not dare to commit a contract for a year or two years I might not I might lose my job so which I do not dare to commit that kind of contract and number two because of this flexi working and arrangement mm. I might only work three to four days a week yeah. so what about the rest of the day I might go from home yeah. and I don't wish to travel far from my place to the working uh, place 
So in that case, this is what the, the current people are looking for. Looking for actually flexible and shorter stick. Mm. Right? So this is the fourth thing that I foresee. Uh, in that case, what are the opportunities I foresee is that whether hotels and uh, apartment or service apartment. So you have actually opportunity to turn mm. the properties into a short-term accommodation. Mm. Kind of money state to, to cater this kind of demand. So in a way, so I see the opportunity how we actually turn. So this property, whether without rental income or unrented, whether it's hotel, whether it's apartment, potentially can generate kind of uh, incomes. Okay, that, that's amazing. So I want to speak about all the opportunities, right, in this industry. So I I guess there are still actually a lot of employers, a lot of business owners hiring, right? Even though despite all yes. this bad news and the <gasps> frightened news that we, we heard we heard of. So okay, since you also a committee members of the Health University Industrial Advisory Board. So basically, I want to actually help to recruit like the graduates, right, from uni, graduate from the university, and uh, you are also a business owner yourself, a boss yourself. So, can you tell us? Can you share with us? I'm sure our audience here would love, really love to know. So, what are the candidates? What are the what type of candidates, and what are the criteria of the candidates that an employer is looking for, like after this COVID? or during this COVID-19 or after COVID-19? Uh, well, this, I mean, looking at just now what we had discussed, mm. all those very negative uh, figures or news. Yes. But however, I always believe there are still opportunities. Mm. And uh, whether if you are in a positive mindset, and uh, there are people where employers are still looking for uh, your staff or employees, whatever. Uh, now, this is purely based on my personal experience. For the past 15, 20 years, we do actually uh, looking for talent, whether fresh graduation or, or whatever. Uh, this is some of the criteria uh, I personally feel that is important if you're looking for a job from now onwards. Now, firstly, I think uh, one of the important values is about accountability mm -hmm. because uh, this is all uncertain yeah. situation and there's a lot of challenges every day happen whichever industry are you in. So you must be able to solve problems, giving solutions. Right, and uh, this is one thing. Now, second thing is about positive mindset. Mm. So uh, you must have a mindset that is all can do, mm. possible, right? But despite all these challenges in market, whether you are in, in all F and B, is hotels and etc. So if your mindset telling you, hey boss, the business market is slow, no, there's no sales and etc. So there's no boss willing to actually, you know, hire you. Mm. So if you get the kind of mindset. Be positive. So number three, uh, it's always important that you must actually have passion. You love what you do. This is always I believe. Now, uh, people who are actually in hotel sector in the past, you are in this line for ten, for three years, five years, or ten years. Now you are in this line for long enough. I'm sure that you love. You know, or perhaps you are very passionate in this line. Uh, that was actually good. Right? So the three basic things that you must have. This is my personal opinion. Uh, then number four is about because of the um, all companies and uh, they're trying actually to do multitasking today yeah. because actually uh, the employee has already laid off right mm -hmm. so imagine they used to have 20 staff if it now become a 10 staff so meaning is what so 10 employees doing 20 employees work works so in a way you need to be able to do multitask from you know uh, from customer services marketing perhaps uh, back-end management, admin, and etc. So all bosses and employers are looking for people able to do all these things. Mm. So you cannot tell the bosses, hey, I'm going to do, I know how to do A, I don't know how to do B. Right? So that's very important that you need to know. Right? Uh, number five, and uh, bosses today are also in pain situation. Right? When they hire you, they hope actually you're able to think from boss perspective. Mm. Right? So uh, you can't expect there's a high pay at current situation. There's no employer possibility to give you a very high pay. So in a way, I believe employer even like myself. So I will reward my colleagues or my employee in a way via uh, performance basis, mm -hmm. right? So on the revenue or sales basis, this means you will have a basic and then uh, plus your sales or revenue performance. 
or commission basis. That's how actually you get a reward. So what I'm going to tell you is that you must have a mindset like an attribute. Yeah. I work harder, then I get more. Yeah. So that is the mindset that you need to equip especially for today during this pandemic crisis or even the next three and six months. So hope these tips, uh, experience or sharing that helps you during your interview or looking for a job and better ideas and okay. make yourself in equipment and bring this. Wow, guys, there are a lot of insights and information that Ivan has actually shared with us, right? How he you change his career from mechanical engineer, uh, becoming a real estate and a tourism expert, all right? And being so many years, more than 15 years in this industry. So thank you so much, Ivan, for having me, for sharing with all of us this, um, you know, all these insights and experience that you have. I'm sure that all this information, sharing of Ivan definitely can help you guys, especially right now, this pandemic crisis, right? When you're, especially if you're looking for a job, please listen to uh, Ivan sharing. You have the entrepreneur mindset, be accountable, and all the criteria that employer looking for, I'm sure you will get a new job or you will get new opportunities in no time. Guys, if you have any questions, you want to reach out to Iwan, make sure that you follow and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Okay, Iwan also have, he's also becoming a YouTuber as well. <laughs> Not becoming, he's also a YouTuber actually, right? So make sure that you subscribe to his channel, Why Bad, all right? So you can reach out to him on the email address stated in the YouTube channel. All right, so in fact, I even posted a lot of uh, about white bed uh, business models and sharing a lot of insightful experience of his in his channel. So make sure you check it out. All right, so thank you so much guys for watching this video and being with us here today. This is really, really uh, such a blessing and uh, we are so thankful to have you all with us here. So if you like this video, like our sharing, please give video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, all right? All right so thank you, Sam. Thank you, Len. And thank let's you. looking forward to see you guys and leave a comment. So we try best to respond to you as soon as, soon as possible. Yes. See you guys. See you guys. Have a good day. And as always, wish you all the best and enjoy your life journey. Bye.